uh, the Cubans are to us to have allowed us young black South Africans to be actually exposed to such a great model that one day it will actually benefit South Africa because when we looked at it at the time our training it wasn't because we wanted to actually address some issues when we went there we just got an opportunity but now we needed to convert that opportunity and make it an opportunity once again for our country and responding directly to our people in the country because they we owe them that they use their taxpayers money to finance our training and then what we need to do is to respond to their call to say we've trained you now come back and plow back to the community and make sure that you give necessary uh, management practices that you've left to address some of the health issues. What do you think the differences are between um, someone like you who's trained outside of the country, particularly in the Cuban model, and the guys, girls back at home who've trained in, say, Walter Sisulu University, which has a, a Cuban style of curriculum? Well, something that I think is critical that we need to understand is there's this one word that is called exposure which is critical. South Africans tend to stay at home and they don't want to know what is happening outside of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Now we've had an opportunity to go outside. Now when we're outside, we're looking at South Africa from a distance. Now we are able to be, to compare, because now we are actually experiencing both systems and then we are in a better situation to actually understand the critical things that we need to address in South Africa, looking and comparing with the Cuban system. That is very critical because it's exposure that is relevant to the training of any individual per se, but we have an advantage of primary health care that is experienced at the first hand. Which even with best teaching in Walter Sisulu, using a Cuban approach with community exposure, you're being exposed to the South African system. To the South African system, system once again. Okay. Because now, in, you, in Walter Sisulu, what they have is they have the whole system, but is there anybody recognizing what they're doing? Is there enough publicity of what are they doing? Are we giving value to what are they doing? Have we done any studies and published it and adopted it in our country? We mentioned something very critical. Why are we continuing training students in Cuba when our universities think that they can do a better job? Precisely. Huh? Yeah, that's no, a good because question. if they can do a better job, then mm. put people in and let's increase those numbers that we need and stop mm. sending people to Cuba. But if we do have a different agenda, to say, no, 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 we're actually looking at it in another way to say, in Cuba, they've got this particular model that we're interested in. Let's send cadres that are going to pick up that and modify it to suit our own environment. Now we're looking at it in a different way. Right now, there's a lot of talk from universities to universities. People want to think about how possible it is to decentralize the level of training mm -hmm. into community-based training. Just like all the universities are trying to do, why all of a sudden there is this uh, sort of like uh, uh, agency in terms of why do they want to do that? It's mm -hmm. because the world is changing from the curative model into a preventative and a promotion of health and they want to form part of that uh, uh, movement, you know, and then now they're starting to realize, no, maybe we are not doing things right. But now we've got thousands of students that are in Cuba. Let's utilize them effectively and let's not frustrate them. So what are the plans for the thousand students that are going to start coming back from 2017? That's another mistake that we've done. We've sent students without a framework and a plan to say, we're sending you there because you want to come back to this system that we have already created. Because, I mean, if you are making such a great enthusiastic move to say that I'm sending thousands instead of 40 to Cuba, then you should have a very good plan in place for you to be able to make it easy for you to absorb. But it seems as if we're still figuring out. We're what still we chatting with the university. If, if you were in charge of the plan for the returning Cuban doctors in 2017, what would be the principles or the ideas you'd like to see happen in that plan? I think basically I would like the universities to be involved more. If at all we want to bring the Cuban trained student from fifth year to come back here and finish the final year, because that's another thing. Mm. We don't come here as fully qualified doctors. We come here to finish medicine in South Africa. Mm -hmm. but Remember, that is very tricky because HPCSA, HPCSA, yes, which is the Health Council, right? Mm -hmm. They are in charge of who's able, who's supposed to be, or who's allowed to work in this country and who's not. So if you don't pass the exams, you're not going to well, get in. Now, if you qualify in Cuba and you're coming back and you're not passing the exam, what's going to happen to you? You're going to stay at home until you pass it. Mm -hmm. 
and then it's a waste of you sitting at home not working and everything like it's not happening in, in the other students that are actually working uh, that, that have trained in the other countries like China mm -hmm. now what I would like to see happening is I want us to actually look at the Cuban experience as a motivation to say that we can do better let's take these students that are coming back and incorporate them the critical thing is integration mm -hmm. I would like to see more of that integrate them in the system and have the universities that are fully accepting them and nature them as their own mm -hmm. and reduce stigma and stop you know criticizing you can want to help people just because they are lacking in a particular field but without putting much stigma on them. and that is critical because with young people with low self-confidence and you start doing that you're crashing their, their IQ so that nurturing what would that what would that include what sort of specific things would you like to see in a nurturing package? Nurturing package, I want to see basically mentoring in terms of uh, the clinical aspects of our own South African training. With no doubt, Cuban uh, uh, sort of like uh, system is different as well as the uh, what we call the profile of diseases. South Africa has another profile of diseases, sure. but we need to be incorporated in that and not looked as people that do not know but rather looked at as people that were so unfortunate to be trained in a country that didn't have that because they have trained those problems. So then we need to be incorporated and saying, okay, you don't know this, let's do one, two, and three, let's create these projects that are going to enable you to be proficient in this particular field. Just like we do yearly, they do uh, ATLS and ACLS so that people can be efficient in emergency medicine. Why can't you do that to me? Correct. Yeah. Just looking back on your experiences overall, were there things that um, you think could have been improved in the Cuban time that you spent? I think, uh, to me, my worry has always been uh, the lack of uh, motivation from uh, the government, per se, in terms of motivating us and giving us the real reason why we were sent to Cuba. Because when we go to Cuba, we're young. And 17 in yes, your case. and uh, and we're very young, and almost we don't know a lot of things, and we need to be natured. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to be we need to be directed in a way that is going to actually benefit our country. So if you don't have that nurturing during your course of training, you, you can be lost. But be nurtured the by the South African system. By the system. South African system. Possibly by somebody by somebody from the medical school you go medical back school. to finish. Yes, definitely. You know, because at the end of the day, you don't choose which medical school you go to anymore. Because some people will say, no, no, it's difficult in UCT or in Stellenbosch or in Pets, so I want to go to Medunza. Because there's a theory that it's better to go to some institution than the going others. to others. You know, so that's also another thing. We need uniformity amongst the universities. We, we need to know that everybody is on board, thinking about the same issues, and they actually prepare to take in student in a, a same sort of like basis and a background. Yeah. To say you're coming here, this is the program, and everybody is going to be using the same program, and they stick to it. Yeah. And it seemed logical yeah. for people to know which medical school they were going to go yeah. to for their final year. For their final year. They could know that certainly a few years, a in, few advance. years in advance. Yeah. So if we can start doing that and making you know you're going to be going to UCT, you know how UCT is, you know, you're going to be, you know, be influenced by this type of people who've done these uh, researches and all yeah. this, or in, in Stellenbosch, and then you, you become more interested into things. And the, you are driven into sort of like understanding more than what you're actually doing in class. Because basically medicine is not about everything in class. It's more about what is happening outside you. But because that's what makes you a good doctor. And tell me about what was it like trying to keep in touch with family, friends in South Africa when you were in Cuba? Because I've just been and the internet's not great. Telephones are expensive. At least maybe you weren't there just like a few years ago. When we went there in 2002, it was even harder to get internet and uh, I remember that the first time I heard about Facebook was when I came back home <laughs> so because I mean that, that you couldn't possibly get a chance to actually go into the computer lab and, and access mm. you know like a complete internet maybe intranet you could have yes. uh, but I mean the full internet in terms mm. of reading what is happening in your country because it's important to keep on updating yourself with the, what is happening in so your country. So how did you do you that? Know? So what we did is we used to pop up from our pocket and go outside to the Cuban houses uh, and then get people that are very much connected and, and ask, you know, can't we do this? Uh, you know, we want to access some information. Can't you help us do that? And we had a lot of friends. You know, they say it's survival of the fittest. So you need to look at who, uh, who are the people that you want to have relationship with to, in order to get what you want. So you know which people you want to be friends with so that you can benefit. So we had the same stuff. 
Very good. <laughs> Th thank you very much. That's very interesting and thank informative. You. Thank you.